everyone who knew Fred, Michael, and Spencer knew that it was better to stay away from this trio. Most people at college thought these students allowed themselves too much and suspected that they had some influential connections in the teaching staff. There was no other explanation of how they managed to systematically skip lectures and still get good grades, which allowed them to effortlessly go year to year of college. Of course, there was no proof of any illicit activities, and so people could only guess as to who'd been helping the trio stay in college. All of them had remarkably similar personalities, and so over the years they spent at college, they turned into a tight-knit group of buddies. Being the children of rich parents, Mason, Spencer, and Fred could easily allow themselves to crack obscene jokes at the teachers or mock their less fortunate fellow students that got in their way. Everyone understood that each of these guys were no threat on their own, but as a group, they were more dangerous than a pack of hyenas searching for their next prey. It seemed as though justice would never be served, and that no one could put Mason, Fred, and Spencer in their place. The guys mistakenly assumed that they were exceptional, invincible, and great jokesters, who could do anything from cracking an innocent joke to passing hurtful and sarcastic comments. Sure, once in a while some brave student tried to stand up to the shameless trio, but no good ever came from these attempts. Finally, when all the students accepted the fact that the college was dominated by Fred Spencer and Mason, a new female student joined the Department of Advanced Technologies and Design. Despite her good looks, Claire Watson dressed rather modestly, and based on her appearance, one could never think that she was a student at one of California's most prestigious universities. Naturally, the arrival of such modest young women didn't go unnoticed by the cocky trio. Well, look at that. She's dressed like a real beggar. Her parents are probably some kind of farmers from Oklahoma, who spent the last of their savings to send their daughter to college, said Mason, giving the newbie a contemptuous look. Yeah, upstarts like her reek of milk and staples from a mile away, added Fred, supporting his friend. But when Claire Watson heard their humiliating comments, she obviously couldn't stay silent. You know what? It's better to grow up on a farm in Oklahoma than become losers like all of you. You're nothing without your parents' money, and all you do is hide behind their connections, retorted Claire, completely unfazed. Claire's response was heard by all the students that were in the class at the time. So they all smiled, and some of them even applauded. Needless to say, Claire's demeaning response was a hard blow to the guy's pride. Meanwhile, the other students also grew to respect the new student, who wasn't afraid to stand up to the annoying trio. Unfortunately, Mason and his buddies held a grudge against the young woman, who humiliated them in front of an auditorium full of people. Of course, after that fiasco, they didn't want to openly confront her and decided to seek revenge in a more refined way. Meanwhile, Claire attended all the lectures, did her teachers proud on her exams, and didn't even suspect what the inseparable trio had been planning for her. Let's pretend that we chose to ignore her insult and invite her to my birthday party. And why not? I'll have the party at the best restaurant in town. We'll invite a bunch of people, and Claire too. She'll probably come wearing one of her cheap outfits. We'll film her and put the video on social media. I think that once she's humiliated that badly, no one will ever want to talk to her again," suggested Mason. Mason's idea inspired Fred and Spencer so much that they laughed happily and started rubbing their hands in anticipation of what would be an awesome scene. More than anything, they wanted to get even with the shameless woman, who they considered an upstart beggar. To make it happen, Mason rented out an expensive restaurant located on the corner of Main Street and sent out the invitations with the date and time of the party. And while everyone else got their invitations in the mail, Claire Watson got hers in person. Come to my birthday party on Saturday. I'm turning 25. That's an important date, okay? The entire year will be there, so it would be awesome to see you there as well, said Mason with a fake smile. Claire was surprised, but looking Mason in the eyes, didn't suspect anything suspicious. Okay, sure, 
I'll be there, Mason, said the young woman and took the invitation without much hesitation. Of course, she had no idea at the time that he was simply luring her into a trap. And so she headed off to her lecture, not suspecting a thing. Mason looked at her closely as she headed off and then gave his friends the thumbs up. Of course, the guys didn't know that Claire's parents weren't farmers at all and were more of the intellectual than the working class. But for the offspring of rich businessmen, this didn't mean anything at all. For them, the only thing of value was money. And so, a university professor was at about the same level for the three of them as a truck driver. In order to record all the details of Claire's embarrassment, Mason and his friends set up several video cameras at the restaurant. They were supposed to record in live mode and upload the recording to one of the popular social media sites immediately. In anticipation of the upcoming party, the week dragged on painfully slow. And when Saturday finally came, the insidious trio felt that their time to shine had come. Dressed up in expensive suits, Mason, Fred, and Spencer arrived at the restaurant in a rented Cadillac convertible. Then, the young men quietly turned on the video cameras inside the restaurant and patiently waited. Not ten minutes later, the guests started arriving at the restaurant. As he greeted the guests and accepted their gifts, Mason was constantly on the lookout for Claire, who hadn't arrived yet. Maybe she won't come. I bet this beggar got scared and decided not to embarrass herself in front of other people. Mumbled Fred, disappointed. Mason knew that there was a grain of truth in what his friend was saying, and so he had lost hope of seeing the hated woman. And when it already seemed like Claire Watson wasn't going to show up, a black limousine slowly pulled up in front of the corner. Mason and his friends looked impatiently as the car pulled up, completely confused as to who could be inside. But when the limousine finally stopped by the entrance and its door opened, the trio saw something that made them break into a sweat. It was Claire Watson who emerged from the limo, and she was accompanied by an attractive young man dressed in an expensive suit. Claire herself wore an elegant evening dress, which obviously had been purchased at an expensive boutique and not some cheap discount store. The young woman's hair was done up intricately to emphasize her natural beauty and charm. Coming up close to Mason, Claire wished him a happy birthday and handed him a wrapped gift. It was an expensive wristwatch of a world-renowned brand. How is that even possible? I thought you came from a poor family, whispered Mason, surprised. Claire laughed happily in response and said, Who told you my parents were poor? Perhaps you came to this conclusion when you saw my clothes? I make a point to dress in modest clothes because I think that showing off luxury is a sign of bad taste. My father is a director of a private college and my mother is a chancellor of the University of California. When they heard this information, Mason and his friends' faces changed. They definitely didn't expect such a turn of events and realized that instead of making fun of the insolent young woman, they ended up being the object of the joke. As it turned out a little later, Claire Watson's companion was a wealthy businessman whose financial assets value had eight zeros in it. Moreover, Ethan Taylor personally knew the parents of the unbearable trio and had lucrative contracts signed with them. Only now it was clear to Mason and his friends how misguided they'd been this entire time. In an attempt to put others down, they hadn't noticed that they themselves became the butt of the joke and the video cameras recorded the entire fiasco. The three friends were so shocked that they forgot to turn them off. And now, in just a couple of minutes, their conniving plan will become known to the entire university, where they'd been putting people down for years. Meanwhile, Claire was enjoying herself in the company of her beloved, who she'd been dating for several years. Feeling humiliated, the trio decided to back off into the far corner of the restaurant, where they spent the remainder of the evening all on their own. The next day, thanks to the videos uploaded to social media, the entire campus knew what had happened at Mason's birthday party. Meanwhile, everybody considered Claire Watson a real heroine, 
who taught the insolent trio, incapable of decent human behavior, a great lesson. The culmination of this resonating story was the public apology from Mason, Fred, and Spencer, who had now become outcasts on campus. Of course, Claire Watson generously forgave the inseparable trio and tried to forget about the incident as soon as possible. She understood that people are prone to making mistakes, and therefore anyone can make stupid decisions at some point in their life.